What's up guys? I've been meaning to get this video done for a while, but it took me a minute to get an appointment at the uh, Chevy dealership here. But um, this will be everything you need to know about upgrading your HMI from 2.0 to 2.5. I just got back from the dealership and I got bad news for me. So this is, this is an important notice for all of you with the Android phone. iPhone users, you don't have to worry about this, but if you have an Android phone, pay very close attention. I'm gonna put this uh, on the video also so you can take a picture of it. Ensure that if you get a HMI out of a Corvette, that you get one from this VIN forward. And depending on what vehicle you take your HMI out of, it's gotta start at this VIN number and move on from there. So anything after that, you should be okay. I took mine to the dealership and they tried to upgrade it, but during the process, they got back to me and said that uh, it made it all the way through. And when they went to put in the VIN number that was associated with the HMI unit, it said invalid VIN. So I can't update mine to use Android Auto, which sucks because I don't have an uh, I don't have an iPhone. I don't have a current iPhone anyway. I have an iPhone Seven and. It doesn't hold the charge very well. I don't know if that's the USB port in the car or the uh, iPhone itself. It's pretty old. So, um, and it doesn't work that great. So that could be the iPhone also. So that's just an added note. I wanted to give that information because if you do the process yourself like I did and get the pieces off of eBay to keep the cost down, check the VINs. I mean, check the serial numbers, check the VINs, make sure that you get the, the right part numbers. Just for that reason, it may be easier to just buy a kit from uh, one of the companies companies online that do the entire process for you. So, um, yeah, that's that's the bit of uh, important information. And with that being said, we can go ahead and get to the regular video and go to the install. What's up everybody, um, just checking in, got a quick video real quick. So last week while I was driving around, my screen just completely cut off and went dead. So that's what I get for getting the 2014. They were known for those HMI failures and stuff. So fortunately I had a uh, replacement HMI and radio module already on standby waiting for it to fail pretty much so i sent it off to jd ivi systems small business I'm trying to support the small businesses in a time like this and uh she got it done knocked out in like two days sent it back for the anti-locks so i'm going to go ahead and install this i've taken everything apart before it doesn't take that long so this video will probably be pretty short it's just you gotta pull this don't mind the crumbs we went on a drive this weekend but gonna vacuum those out afterwards but pull this back uh, pull down the lining for the carpet and your um, your radio module sits right here behind here and then the HMI sits right under here oh, I don't know if I'm getting it I'll get a better view later yeah, so a quick change, quick install, and if you want to see what mine is currently doing, so you can compare if yours is doing the same thing. So, as you can see, car is on, screen is not. Screen response doesn't show a picture. Before, it would just flash and the image would be real flashy uh, flashy uh, staticky and go in and out and uh, you can see it like an old raggedy TV getting a bad antenna signal is what it looks like best way to describe it but it actually still responds like if um, I'm using uh, my phone now but oh yeah as you can see the Bluetooth still responds listening to that sir album but um still works it just no picture so hopefully this works and if not I'll be replacing the screen next so 
let's cut that off and uh, let's get to it. Oh, look at that. So much easier to access. Okay. So now, you get this bolt here. Let me go get a... I'm gonna guess and say that's either a 10 or a 12. Let's see. So, confession time, because I'm an idiot. There are other screws other than the one at the top, and I never noticed it the last time I did this. There's one right here, but underneath on the bottom of the carpet, boom. And another, I can't pull this up, uh, which is why I didn't see him last time. You have to pull this all the way back, and I didn't want it to uh, come off the floor, so. But my mistake, it's right there. Come on. there, as you can see. Those are both 10 millimeters as well. So once you remove that, this comes off easy. This job gets a lot less annoying. Okay, so plate off, three bolts. God, I wish I would have known that last time. Your HMI sits behind this unit and behind this, uh, I'm gonna call it a gate for now. Mine is not held in by anything at all. I don't know why, but it wasn't the first time either. So you can reach your hand back here and come. Let me see that. That's me lifting it. It's just kind of dangling and bouncing around here. That might be why it's broke. I don't know. But uh, if you can, f there's no way to physically show how to do this. You actually, you just gotta feel for the cables. And either you can try and unplug them and uh, reach it, pull it around, or you can try and pull it around and then unplug them. Up to you how you want to do it. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to remove this and make this a little easier for myself. Pull this off here. All right, let's move you out of the way. All right, so now you can see it. With this moved out of the way, you can see your uh, cables that are plugged in. Making it a little bit easier if you wanna try and unplug them by putting your hand back there and bringing the whole unplugged unit forward, which is how I did it last time. So, this is a, again another personal preference thing, but you're gonna have to get it around this big cable loom here which is a pain and this plastic gate as I called it does not come up oh wait I lied again I think I just found the bolt up here in the top corner yeah so I think I'm gonna pull that off and see if I can get this to come forward just a little bit it doesn't need to come forward much and I know for a fact that I don't need it to come forward at all to get it out because I did it last time but just for a uh, safe time here, you say do it the right way and hopefully it'll be easier. So yeah, I'm gonna hit this bolt, see if this comes forward, it gives me some uh, room to play with, and get that out of there a little bit easier. I will check back in hopefully not too long. Let's get to it. That bolt, yes, it does loosen this, but there are so many little clips and uh, those little plastic grommet things that I can hate that I'm just gonna pull it forward and pull the radio module out without taking off this little gate because whatever I know it yeah, works pulling it up a little grabbing it and it's coming forward already and it's about out actually oh there we go I did do that okay. Let's just unplug these now. One. Two. Three. And ten. And five. Good to go. Five connections. And this bad boy is out of here. All right, not too bad. Let's get the replacement in. 
I got these off of eBay, if you're wondering. I believe they came out of a truck. Not sure, but if you want, I'll uh, link the park part numbers that you need. Uh, certain websites sell this in a complete kit and do everything for you and send it out to you. But I think they charge like $600, $700. And altogether, I think I spent 300 Oh, hmm. I might have to check and see how much they charge because I remember doing the math and it being cheaper doing it this way. But I know altogether I paid about 500 bucks in used parts. Oh, well, maybe it was less than that, maybe 400 bucks. But I'll have prices at the end of this, so it'll be more accurate. So let's get this in here and um, uh, install the HMI on the other side, which really takes no time at all. So this is this is the hardest part. Once this is done, the rest of it is a breeze. So we're all back and in place here. Before I put the metal plate back on, however, I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and install the HMI and test it to see if uh, it actually fixed my problem. Because if not, I might put the old one back in and uh, replace the screen and do one thing at a time. That way I don't make five changes and have no working stereo, so. Other side, where's the HMI? There is your HMI unit. You see that? NG 2.0 HMI. You unclip these. These easy come off easily. And then there are two clips along the side of the HMI mounting thing. I guess you can kind of see one over there. Yep, see that? Right. I'm touching with the light. There. And you're going to have to compress those and the HMI slides down. So. Another easy one, so I'm about to pull this out and get this swapped out and give it a test. And hopefully, if you guys see this video, that means it was successful. If not, then, um, yeah, this will probably be easier for you guys that don't have this third pedal. But then your cars aren't as fun to drive, so... Anyways, um, I'll throw a little shade. It's out. I'm gonna plug the new one in. I'm not gonna hang it up. We're just gonna cut the car on and see what happens. All right, so this is the final part of this install. Swapping out the USB. Apparently you need the other one for Apple CarPlay. Insert, press in. You can feel something going in and out. And you just pull it out, it says. But let me uh, do hand it. Gotta pry it a little bit. Come out. Uh, so there is a little press on both sides. Okay, hard to see. I have an angled pick tool, so that is how I got this one. Okay, so now you gotta flip few plugs to undo, one here, and yeah, one here. Okay, so I apologize if this video is a little hard to follow. I originally started trying to chase down the, the issues with my screen and replace the HMI and radio module in the process because I already had them on standby. After disassembling the center console, um, the screen actually, I guess it fixed itself. Like there was nothing there to fix and during testing, it just started working and it hasn't had any issues since. So. I don't know if that was worth adding to the video considering there was nothing there to be fixed. It Everything was in pretty good condition. So here's the CarPlay though, working. There are a few issues. Um, right now, I believe that may just be because I'm using an old iPhone 7 that's no longer supported by Apple and everything. So could be that. Um, 
another issue I ran into is with this display here. These overlap the screen and there's no way to minimize this menu. It does not go down. Um, I've tried using like a stylus, trying to select that little arrow there. It's stuck there and it does not change. So all those issues aside with the uh, little CarPlay problems and that screen, I will probably still go through and do the install because this um, 2.5 interface looks better and responds better than the 2.0 interface does. You can even respond and send text messages on screen. It's not gonna let me do it now while this iPhone is plugged in, but you do have that capability with the 2.5. So no Android Auto for me, as I explained earlier in the video, but that's fine. Uh, for my, my next phone, if it breaks, I might consider an iPhone, but probably not. But yeah, it's working, operational, just those slight little hiccups. Hopefully you don't run into this. And if you do, an update at your uh, Chevy dealership may fix it, but unsure on that. So that about covers it, guys. I'm going to get out of here and uh, let you guys get to it.